Hello there! Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever it is that you are watching this video. So this is our fifth video in our video series for Chapter 9. We are still in homeostasis and we're still talking about the kidney. So this video is on 9.3c, which is urine concentration by countercurrent multiplier mechanism. A fair warning, this video may be a little bit confusing, so you may need to go through it once or twice more. And always do not hesitate to ask me for questions or to ask friends or roommates even for tips and discussions. Okay, let's get into it. All right, so when we talk about urine concentration, we're talking about making the urine more concentrated. Kita mau kasi jadi air kencing itu semakin pekat. So we are going to do this with this mechanism called countercurrent multiplier mechanism. And this process happens in the loop of Henle. The longer is your loop of Henle, the more concentrated your urine will be. So let's first understand the two keywords that are in this name. The first keyword is countercurrent. Dia arus yang berbeza. Uh, ber bertentangan, sorry. Dia arus yang bertentangan. So the fluids will pass each other and they move in opposite directions. The first one is when fluid flows down the descending limb. And the second one is when fluid flows up the ascending limb. Inilah dia punya counter current. Dalam buku biasanya tidak tunjuk ni tapi selep, uh, ada satu lagi current adalah semasa dia turun collecting down. Okay, next keyword, multiplier. Multiplier, efek dia semakin berganda. The effect will increase as fluid movement continues from descending to ascending limb. When the fluid flow down the descending limb, they increase the osmotic concentration in the filtrate. That means when it is going down, there is high concentration of sodium chloride in the fluid that is in the loop of Henle. Because water being absorbed, by osmosis. Kita boleh cakap increased osmotic concentration, kita boleh cakap high concentration of NaCl. Ingat cecair yang dalam nephron ini kita belum boleh panggil dia sebagai urine. Kita boleh panggil dia sebagai fluid ataupun filtrate. So in this text, I am going to use a lot of the term fluid. Not kencing ya, fluid. Okay. Most books, uh, most lecture notes will not focus on this, but sometimes you find videos that use this point. So, kadang-kadang buku lain dia akan cakap, multiplier itu disebabkan oleh adanya sodium pump dan chloride pump in this segment of, sorry, in this segment of the ascending lip. Sebab dia yang pump itu Na, NCL, dia yang menggandakan efek. So, some videos and some books will talk about this point. Mm, untuk syllabus kita sekarang, kita tidak fokus kepada Na dengan Cl punya pump. Kita fokus kepada effect increase as fluid movement continues. So, this is our main uh, explanation for the term multiplier. Tapi tidak salah kalau kamu jumpa poin itu di tempat lain. Okay, so as the fluid flows up the ascending limb, there will be decreasing osmotic concentration in the ascending limb. Sebab bila dia menaik tu, cecair yang di dalam tu akan menjadi less concentrated. It becomes hypotonic in the filtrate. The concentration of the filtrate is at its highest at the bottom of the loop of Henle. So, bila dia di bawah-bawah itu loop of Henle, masa itulah fluid ini ataupun filtrate ini paling pekat, most concentrated. Okay, so what is the function of the loop of Henle? The function of loop of Henle is to conserve water. The loop of Henle will create a water potential gradient between the renal glomerular filtrate and the interstitial fluid. Dia pastikan ada water potential gradient antara dua kawasan ini. 
So it will create a very high concentration of salts in the interstitial fluid in the medulla of the kidney. Yang bahagian siya kasi mera tadi. Water will move out by osmosis from collecting duct into interstitial fluid in the medulla. So daripada loop of Henle dan daripada collecting duct, air akan keluar dengan cara osmosis. And then water will enter the blood circulation via vasa recta. So ingat ada blood capillary yang berdekatan dengan loop of Henle dan sekeliling uh, sekeliling sekeliling tisu-tisu tu. So air yang keluar melalui osmosis dia masuk ke dalam interstitial fluid lepas tu dia akan diserap melalui vasa recta. Okay. So the more concentrated the tissue fluid, the more water can be drawn out and the more concentrated the urine can be. Okay, once again, the more concentrated is the tissue fluid, the more water can be drawn out. And when what more water is drawn out, the urine will be more concentrated. Water loss will increase the urea concentration. So, sekarang banyak urea dalam filtrate. Urea will diffuse out of the collecting duct into interstitial fluid down the concentration gradient. So, that will occur on this part of the collecting duct. This countercurrent multiplier is the process by which a progressively increasing osmotic gradient is formed in the interstitial fluid of the renal medulla as a result of countercurrent flow. Proses countercurrent multiplier ini adalah proses di mana osmotic gradient akan terus dihasilkan antara kita punya nephron, punya filtrate, dengan interstitial fluid of renal medulla, tisu-tisu di sekeliling, sekeliling dia. Bila kamu explain, jangan guna medula saja ya. Mesti cakap renal medula. So, this countercurrent flow through the descending and ascending limbs of the loop of Henle establishes the osmotic gradient in the renal medula. And kidneys use this osmotic gradient to excrete concentrated urine. This, okay, the countercurrent flow through the ascending and descending limbs yang menyebabkan ada perbezaan osmotic gradient. Baru air boleh mengalir keluar, barulah kencing kita boleh jadi pekat. Itu maksud ayat-ayat dalam slide ini. Okay. So, just a quick recap kita tengok balik. Structure loop of Henle ini. The descending limb will have thin walls. Descending limb is also highly permeable to water but only relatively impermeable to ions. So it will allow water to diffuse easily through its walls via osmosis. Ingat balik, the ascending limb, it has a thin portion and a thick portion. The thin portion, the thin ascending limb, the lower half of the ascending limb and it has thin wall. Uh, so it is impermeable to water. Walaupun dia nipis, air tidak boleh keluar but permeable to ions. The thick ascending limb, bagian atas, impermeable to water, permeable to ions juga. Part yang thick ascending limb sahaja yang akan actively pump Na plus and Cl minus from the filtrate into interstitial fluid. Di bawah, dia adalah passive diffusion. Di atas, active transport kasih keluar NaCl. Okay, now we are going to go through this process, this countercurrent multiplier mechanism. But we follow the flow of the filtrate. Kita ikut cecair tu jalan dari mana, kita cuba explain step by step. This segment is how I will explain the countercurrent mechanism, uh, countercurrent multiplier mechanism in conserving water if the essay asks me to answer. Okay, kalau kamu kena suruh menjawab dalam essay, Inilah ayat cantik yang kamu patut guna untuk explain. Okay, let's begin. So we're gonna begin at the thin descending limb. Thin descending limb has thin wall and it's highly permeable to water but relatively impermeable to ions. The presence of aquaporin water channel in the wall allow water to move out by osmosis. 
Initially, the filtrate that enters the loop of Henle is isotonic to the interstitial fluid. So, sebelum dia masuk tu, dia adalah isotonic kepada tisu-tisu di sekeliling dia. Okay, I'll pause the explanation for a little bit. If you want, you can find a diagram, ataupun kamu lukis diagram kamu sendiri, kamu lukis ini loop of Henle, dan kamu label bersama-sama saya bila saya punya screen ada tunjuk arrow-arrow, anak-anak panah ni, kamu boleh ikut dan lukis. Of course, you can pause the video. So, go ahead and do that. I'm going to shrink down and I'm going to continue with my explanation. Okay? Pandai-pandai kamu ikut saya. Okay. So, that is the first part about the descending lid. As, as the fluid flows down, water in descending limb is drawn out by osmosis due to interstitial fluid has lower water potential because of accumulation of NaCl removed from ascending limb. So this area here will have lower water potential because this area has lots of NaCl. This effect is cumulative. And therefore, the renal filtrate is hypotonic to the interstitial fluid at the bottom of the descending limb. Semakin filtrate itu turun, semakin banyak air yang dia akan hilang. Effect is cumulative. Effect ini berganda dan uh, berterusan. So, di atas ni dia hilang sikit. Sampai tengah dia hilang sikit. Bawah lagi dia hilang lagi banyak air. So, semakin dia turun, dia semakin pekat. Bila dia sampai di bawah loop of Henle, where it begins to turn the hairpin, this bottom, it will be hypertonic to the interstitial fluid. Dia akan menjadi pekat dan hypertonic kepada interstitial fluid. Alright, now we will start seeing what happens after we turn and we go into the ascending limb. Okay, as it turns around the hairpin and goes up the ascending limb, Bila dia sampai bahagian ini, dia sampai bahagian thin ascending limb, NaCl will diffuse out into interstitial fluid down concentration gradient by passive transport. At the thick ascending limb, Na plus and Cl minus are actively transported from filtrate into interstitial fluid. So di bawah adalah passive transport, di atas active transport. This will produce a high concentration of ions in the interstitial fluid around the descending limb. As the filtrate flows up the ascending limb, it continues to lose sodium and chloride ions and therefore they will become less concentrated. So, dia semakin naik, makin banyak sodium and chloride ions dikeluarkan, dia semakin cair, okay? less concentrated. The filtrate entering the distal convoluted tubule is hypotonic to the interstitial fluid. Bila dia keluar sini, dia mau pergi next segment which is distal convoluted tubule, dia sudah menjadi hypotonic. Now, as the fluid flows through the collecting duct, which is this part on the right, water moves via osmosis out the collecting duct into the interstitial fluid, and then into vasa recta. Air mengalir keluar melalui osmosis, dan masuk dalam interstitial fluid, kemudian ke dalam vasa recta. With the loss of water, the urea left behind in the tubular fluid becomes increasingly concentrated. Dalam tubular fluid ataupun cecair dalam collecting duct, dia akan menjadi semakin pekat dengan urea. Since the collecting ducts are permeable to urea, urea diffuses out from the fluid into the interstitial fluid. So, dia akan mengalir keluar melalui diffusion. How does this mechanism help to conserve the water in the organism? Well, as the fluid flow through the collecting duct, water will be drawn out of them by osmosis into the concentrated tissue fluid in the medulla. Okay, dia akan, because of this, uh, because of the concentration, the difference in the concentration, water will just flow out by osmosis. And the more concentrated is the tissue fluid, the more water that can be draw, drawn out. 
and the more concentrated the urine will be. So that is how we will explain the countercurrent multiplier mechanism that produces concentrated urine and conserves water. So tadi itu, itu adalah ayat-ayat cantik yang kita guna kalau kamu kena suruh tulis essay. Kalau masa exam, kamu tidak ingat setiap ayat macam tu. I have two tips. Okay? Kalau masa exam, kamu tidak ingat semua ayat-ayat cantik yang saya bagi tadi. Kamu cuba sketch. Pedulilah dalam kertas soalan tu. Kamu punya kertas. So just lukis, conteng. Apa yang kamu ingat daripada contengan kamu, kamu tulislah di sana. Alright, so there's one more thing we need to focus on. We need to talk about how important is the blood capillary that are around the loop of Henle. Vasa recta, the thing that I mentioned just now, is the blood capillary that runs alongside the loop of Henle. The first importance of this blood vessel is it supplies oxygen and nutrients so that the cells in the wall of the loop of Henle can produce the large amount of ATP for active transport oxygen nutrient for active transport and then the vasa recta also removes much of the salt and the water from the tissue fluid in the medulla so it helps to maintain the gradients built up by the loop of henry so terlampau banyak garam dengan air pun tidak bagus kan dia yang tukang ambil nanti okay so i'm just gonna have a very quick conclusion about the countercurrent multiplier mechanism. Water goes whoosh, whoosh. Salts go brr. Interstitial fluid in renal medulla become concentrated. Water goes brr. Urine goes brr. And then all that excess water, excess salt, is collected by vasa recta. The end. That is countercurrent multiplier mechanism. Okay. Um, some something for you to think more creatively. Some food for thought. Try to uh, try to think about it. Will a longer loop of Henle produce more diluted or more concentrated urine in the organism? And second question. How will the length of loop of Henle differ between a mammal adapted from the desert and a mammal adapted for the tropical rainforest? Apa perbezaan panjang loop of Henle dalam dua mammal dalam habitat yang berbeza? Okay, so this is your KBKK hot question for you to think about. And I will move on to the final slide I have, which is, what should you do now? If you're still confused, you can still draw more diagrams of the loop of Henley. Draw arrow on the diagram as you go through your notes. So, sambil baca nota tu, sambil lukis diagram, supaya kamu tahu ayat itu membawa maksud apa dalam diagram. And then, try to answer the worksheet 9.3 which you can find in the Google Classroom. So, ringkas sejak latihan ni, fill in the blank. Tidak sampai pun satu muka surat. Kalau kamu tengok ruang kosong sejak. So, that is your only homework for 9.3. If you understand, that's amazing. If not, try to read it again and don't stress too much about it. Sebab ini cuma sebahagian kecil daripada PSPF. Okay, that is it from me. Thank you very much for your time and attention. And I will hope to see you again in the next video. Thank you and goodbye.